Hey everybody, it's Quicken and it is Five Fact Friday, now with more backgrounds. Um, so I wanna make today's Five Fact Friday kinda like a speed round, so I hope I don't keep going and going and going like I normally do. Uh, thanks to everybody who had such a positive response about my pumpkin horchata cake. That tutorial should be up later today along with this video, Avi. And I also have a really cool monthly favorites video coming out that I feel like is a little different and unique, but it's also still highly requested. So that's that. And I can't think of any other channel homework to talk about. So I'm just going to get started with Five Fact Friday. I say this every week, but I genuinely love these questions this week. So super stoked. Here we go. What are your favorite accidentally vegan foods? like food you enjoyed before you were vegan before, and now they are also still vegan. I love this question. I love accidentally vegan food. I live for it. It is food that is very common and you wouldn't normally think is vegan, not it's accidentally vegan. It's just a phrase. So a lot of common accidentally vegan stuff, like things like Oreos, stuff like that, my favorite food of all life has always been Ritz crackers. I love a Ritz cracker. I love a Triscuit. I think that that is great. Um, Uncrustables, the little peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I love those. And I swear my entire elementary school and possibly middle school life, my grandma made me Ritz cracker peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And she would put five in a bag and they were so sticky and so gross and I loved them and she made them for me for years. And then when I got older and started making them myself, I was like, this is wildly tedious. I can't believe this woman did this for me for years. So that's one of my favorite foods of life. I also love... Um, well, I used to eat peanut chews all the time. They are a candy that's actually uh, made in Philadelphia, but I think they are a global thing. Um, but I got really sick of peanut chews because I was eating them a lot, and I don't have, like, sweet teeth. Like, if I eat too much candy, it kind of hurts, so I try not to eat too much candy. So I'm really over the, like, peanut chews. I kind of did that. But growing up, like, I always kind of liked the more adult cereals. Like, I was always D for Chex. I was always down for, like, Kicks and Cheerios and stuff like that. So, just with soy milk, all of these are still really vegan. Um, I believe it's Kellogg's is a company where the founders were vegans and wanted to make food for vegans. So, that's cool and possibly overlooked as accidentally vegan. And... To stay true, like I love corn, I love mashed potatoes, I love all these types of foods. And I say this before, my grandparents were on the South Beach diet and there's some butter that they buy from the store that is accidentally vegan. So whenever I go to their house, there's always still like butter and like butter noodles has always been like one of my favorite foods, a little bit of salt. Like there's so many things I still genuinely love that I always have, vegan aside. So I think that was a really fun question. Ritz peanut butter and jelly sandwiches are life. So if you could give one piece of advice to someone that is nervous about getting their first tattoo, what would it be? I've been avoiding this question, but I get it so often. So I wanted to talk about it. And I have like two other tattoo questions for this video, but I get a lot of tattoo questions. So I figure answer them. Advice I would give to somebody who is nervous about getting their first tattoo is make sure it's something that you really want and something that you haven't been peer pressured into getting, like making sure that you're not just getting a tattoo because your friend is getting a tattoo that day and you wanted to hang out, not getting a tattoo because the person of interest that you like has tattoos and maybe that would like, you think that they would like that too. And it might be so subconscious that you don't even notice, like, oh yeah, I like, I, I, I've always liked tattoos. I'm gonna get one right now. Because I know that I got a lot of my, not a lot, I got a couple tattoos I know that I wasn't ready for just because I was either admiring somebody who had tattoos or someone was getting a tattoo that day and they wanted me to come too. And your body, 
that nervousness is real and if you have any hesitance any kind of trepidation about getting tattooed i always recommend don't same with like people who are like hey i'm really afraid of the pain i how much does it hurt i really don't want it to hurt for my first tattoo it's always gonna hurt and it hurts a lot and there are people who are like i love the pain but i don't it sucks every time i hate being tattooed i'm not afraid of being tattooed though and i'm not afraid of having permanent tattoos on my body for the rest of my life and it's like yeah i got some tattoo removal yeah i had my ears sewn up but i still live with the tattoos that i have and i know that i make adult decisions when i decide to get them i think if you're nervous make sure you're getting tattoos for the right reason and not out of grief or not out of force or not out of trend because if you just want one of those trendy tattoos that are so cool right now and you see them on Instagram in a few years, they're not gonna be trendy anymore and a lot of people are going to have them. So watch out for that. And I say don't get a tattoo out of grief just because you may feel like you're just grieving and a tattoo may satiate that feeling, but sometimes a reminder of something can be even worse. So if you're hesitant and you're thinking like, I'm going through something right now, it might not be a milestone that you want like a marker. So if you're feeling nervousness and it's like just general, like you're, you're D for your tattoo, it's, there's nothing YOLO about it, like you decided that you wanted it and you are so ready, I would say, you know, have a nice meal, do everything you like to do before your tattoo. If you're a bath kind of person, take that bath. If you're a swimmer, get that done. If you like to run or wrestle or do all this weird stuff or wear really tight clothes, do it all. And, you know, have some of your creature comforts available for you. Your favorite movie is ready. Your favorite series on Netflix, you're ready to get into some food you like. All of these things may help you because they definitely help me. And if you're nervous, you know, do, do your rituals. Do you like to go on your phone? Do you like to check your Instagram? Like have everything ready for you and take a nice breath and get ready to get painfully zapped because tattoos hurt. Hey Quicken, I was wondering what your opinion on something your opinion on something. Do you think it's rude to read while being tattooed if you're sitting for a long time? The only tattoos I have so far are stick and poke and they have been done by friends while reading zines and they have been done by friends and reading zines while being tattooed really took my mind off the pain, but it's never I've never been tattooed by a professional and was wondering if you think it would be improper etiquette. I'm also a very anxious person and talking to strangers kind of freaks me out sometimes. Okay, now it's dark out. Anyway, if you can still see me. So my whole thing on tattoo etiquette and what to do while you're being tattooed, I would say play it by ear. I have gone to tattoo conventions and seen many, many, many different people and many, many, many different tattoo artists all at once seeing what they're doing. And I run into tattoo artists who have their headphones on and they're in their own world doing their work. And then I run into people, same thing, headphones, watching a movie, a couple years ago, portable DVD player, like all of this stuff. And I think that that's acceptable and I've seen it done before. So if it's something that you feel like you are gravitating towards, I've seen it done. And I don't know if there was any improperness to it. Me personally, I am kind of conflicted because I am such a baby when I get tattooed. I hate it. It's excruciating. I wish it was over. Like if I had something to get my mind off of it, it would probably be a lot smoother. But honestly, I have such strong feelings for my tattoo artists. I feel like there is a bond between us and I like to just sit and be with them. And I don't have any tattoo artists who are like the uh, the like music guy with the headphones tattooing. 
every tattoo artist I've ever had has tried to strike up a conversation with me and from social anxiety to another I have a really hard time talking as a hairstylist I have a really hard time with small talk even talking to my clients even when they initiate the small talk I'm still just like but genuinely my tattoo artists are usually like the chillest people on earth they'll always give me a little something to take with me a little bit of advice or a story or some sort of knowledge and i'm not saying that they are like these beings of wisdom but i don't really run into a lot of tattooed people in my every single day so just being with them is comforting to me it's like being with my own people so I like to be with my tattoo artist and I don't really like to ignore them while they're doing their thing but you know I've checked my Instagram I've just like laid flat on my face like I've done all that stuff too and I think like leafing through a magazine is pretty normal reading a zine maybe talking about it with them at the same time do you I'm not encouraging you to break out of what feels comfortable for you um my friend Dave has been tattooed by Alex and Peary and he said at his shop they like watch DVDs and like haggle the DVDs the whole time and I think that's super cool like when he told me that I was like what I want to watch a movie while I'm being tattooed I don't care what movie I don't care what movie I would love to talk trash on a movie with my favorite tattoo artist I think that's super cool and if you're into that i don't know a lot of shops have tvs a lot of shops like play music when i was tattooed last we were watching youtube videos and we were playing music and started listening to trapped in the closet like there's always a fun vibe at a tattoo shop and i say check it out i don't know you might run into a cool conversation that maybe someone else is having or maybe something crazy will happen to you in the parking lot and you'll want to tell somebody so I say it's not rude at all, but feel it out. It's not an excruciating experience. It is not like getting your hair cut and the lady is trying to pry about what college you went to and you dropped out and you don't want to tell her. It's not like that. It's way more chill than that. So related to the last question, I figured I would combine these two. And this says, Semi-related to a similar question, um, could you give me advice about being tattooed and having social anxiety? I never got around to getting tattooed because I probably wouldn't want to go alone and I need somebody for support, but I also don't want to be rude and I don't know the etiquette for bringing a friend. Sorry, it's still so dark. Uh, maybe there's a cloud passing by. So the etiquette for bringing a friend, here, you asked me, so here's my advice and how I personally feel on my Five Pack Friday. I generally go to tattoo appointments alone. And like I just said in my previous question, I really admire my tattoo artists and they are my family. They are my parents. They're my doctors. Like they really mean something to me and just being around them and being in their presence usually offers a comfort to me but at the same time i only get tattooed by like a couple different people so when i see them it always feels like i'm catching up with a friend already or that my tattoo artist is like protecting me if i feel like i am feeling nervous or in pain or i'm scared but i have brought friends to tattoo appointments before and it's super common I like don't bring everybody you know I say definitely just bring one friend and one pretty chill friend not your like super eccentric and freaking out friend who would be like I'm afraid of needles I can't believe you get that up. doesn't that hurt aren't you bleeding don't bring that friend if you have that friend that's your friend at home bring your chill friend or you know bring your supportive friend bring your family but it's not uncommon and it's pretty pretty normal I see it all the time but I have also been disrupted by people bringing a ton of friends like while I'm also being tattooed and they're being tattooed like in the same room or same building 
definitely been disrupted by that before. I've been disrupted by the freaking out friend and also the like girl being tattooed for the first time who brings her entire entourage. Like it's way more chill than that. When I got my shark tattoo on my ribs, it was really painful and really hard for me to talk and communicate during it. So when I got my shark finished, I brought my roommate, my old roommate with me just because the tattoo artist who was tattooing me, he was like vegan and really cool. And I didn't want to like, just be like killed over like, <laughs> yeah, I shot the Whole Foods. Like, so Stephanie came and she was like super cool and talking to him the whole time. And being able to listen to their conversation was really helpful to me because it like calmed me down and it kept me interested in what they were talking about and not too focused on like and you know being cold and tattooed and feeling naked and all of this stuff so if you're getting like a giant project tattoo totally bring somebody you're gonna need some help i feel like when i get my back started i think john is gonna come with me but for like these little knickknack pieces of tattoo that take like two hours and then I leave generally I'm by myself tattoos hold so much weight and so much association that sometimes you can't control it and you might want to think about who you invite to your tattoos because they may become a part of your tattoo and they may become a part of your experience and if you're not nostalgic, if you don't give, then that's great. But keep that in mind if you're bringing like a fair weather friend with you or like your relationship is on the rocks and you're bringing your boyfriend with you and in three weeks you might break up. Keep that in mind that you might like remember him holding your hand, all of this stuff. You look at the tattoo and you're like, it's gone. And then you hate your tattoo, so please, I like to keep that in mind too. Like if I'm getting a tattoo and someone's like, oh, I've never seen a tattoo happen. Can I come? I'm like, I don't know you. Bye. You're not a, you aren't a part of this. And when John came to one of my first tattoos, like I kept that in mind. I was like, this better be the one because my advice to you. And my final question. When you and John are out and about and doing your own thing, do you guys still communicate throughout the day? Do you text and call or do you just wait until you get home and talk about your day? I really like this question because John and I have such a unique communication and I don't mean unique like we're the only people on earth who are like this, but this is the first relationship that has such a healthy communication for me that I'm like, Yes. So John and I do not normally text during the day or call each other. I use Instagram direct message and like I'll send him pictures sometimes throughout the day or he'll at me and like something weird or like a picture of a dog. I really like that because my Instagram notifications are turned off. So I have to go into Instagram for my notifications to appear to me. And then I can kind of see them at my leisure, which is very like checking your email kind of thing. And I really like that because it really takes the edge off of like my dependency on my phone because I do want to know what John is doing and what he's thinking or if something happened but that is reserved for like a phone call so if i have a missed call from john i know it's something important or if i have a text from john i know it's a question that he needs immediately answered but if it's something silly then it's in my instagram and i can check it at my leisure there's no urgency to it and i know that it's something lighthearted. This is the first time I've ever experienced this. When I was like 19, I was in a relationship that was like, I later did like read that it was like pretty abusive because my ex would text me all day. 
And at first you're like, he's thinking about me, like I'm so happy, you know, I'm out in this world. I would, you know, I do want to text him. Oh, I saw something silly. I want to tell him. I used to think that that was like appropriate and normal. You are snoring. You're so sleepy. You're having kitty dreams. So I used to think that that was normal and that that was like in love. Ah. But I later like deem this like, I, I like relationship jail because when I would go to work, it always seemed like when I was the furthest away or the most like stuck where I was, it was when he would text me something urgent or something I needed to reply to or he would start a fight with me or something like that. Something where like if I was texting, it would be inappropriate. And there were so many countless times that he would start a fight with me while I was at work and I couldn't text him back or I couldn't call him back and I would feel 100% compelled to. And I would get in trouble at work all the time, all the time. But I never didn't reply. I never didn't call back. Like I would sneak away. I would feel my phone vibrate and I would feel like nervousness just like completely consume me. And it was all of the time. And I think that texting me all of the time, every time we weren't together was very abusive. Even if it was something positive or just like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? Like, let me live. I can tell you later. I'm not up to no good. And that's honestly what it felt like. And then there was one time in particular where I didn't reply to my, my phone. And he told me that he called my work. And I was just like, that's too much that's completely inappropriate it's so far beyond what's considered normal and that was you know five years ago when we didn't have smartphones and the internet wasn't as present as it is now and i can only imagine it's so much harder for people now because you can see if they're on instagram you can see if they're on twitter you can see what they updated on their tumblr like you can see them all the time and John and I have this happy, completely neutral medium where the, those kind of things are saved for emergencies, but we still like communicate. And if I'm like gone for like a whole day, like I'll probably hear from John, but while I'm at school, while he's at work, you know, if he's working on the house, we don't text. And it's like a blessing. I think it's so great and like the communication is there like if I see a funny picture like I'll send it to him but it's my, it's at my leisure and I think that it's really healthy and I'm so happy for it and it's really great because when the other day when we had an emergency when John called me I knew to pick up. I knew it wasn't just like, oh, I bet he saw something funny. I'll pick it up next time. Like, John doesn't normally call me. This is urgent. So I think saving that for urgency is really great. But I think too much communication and too much constant, constant contact was too abusive for me in my previous relationship. And it robbed me of a privacy that I always thought that I had. And it made me feel like I was up to no good when I wasn't. Like, even when I was at work or if I was at my parents' house, it just made me feel guilty all of the time. And I'm so happy that I could get out of it and be in this. There were times when John and I would text like, throughout the day but it was really on early on in our relationship when we were like kind of just like seeing each other and we kind of grew out of that right away once our relationship was established but I think that that's really fun like I remember that but it was so casual it was 
so lighthearted and just a little bit of a back and forth throughout the day. I also think that's cool. I don't necessarily miss it, but I know that it was like fun and lighthearted. And once we're together, like we'll kind of check our phones and like lay around and stuff. But is there another cat? Are you just gonna knock over my camera? Snickers never texts me. Why don't you text me, Snick? You know I'm thinking about you. But yeah, uh, relationship goals. Don't text me all day. But yeah, this is Five Fact Friday. Stay tuned for the vegan pumpkin video. I think it's gonna be super cool. And there will be a monthly favorites video. And I'm, yeah. Uh, thanks to everybody for your support on Snapchat. If you know what I'm talking about, I love you guys. And thank you so much. Your support means everything to us. And this is a family and I'm so happy about it. I love having the support system. Thanks to everybody who submitted and keeping Five Fact Friday live. This was probably super long and I didn't want it to be. I wanted it to be Flash Fact Friday. But it wasn't. All right, well, thanks again. And until next time, I love you guys so much. Bye.